Welcome to the Caroline Hope Show. My guest is an award-winning writer who's just published his long-awaited new blockbuster, Living with Gandhi. Welcome, John Livermore. Well, thank you, Caroline. <laughs> One thing that struck me when I was reading it was what a brave choice it was in the current climate to make your hero a Muslim. Um, Gandhi was a Hindu. Caroline. <laughs> yes, of course, he was clearly both. And he made his own clothes. Was that symbolic at all? Well, yes. Um, as well as leading a very simple life himself, he also encouraged all Indians not to use British textiles. Oh, I really like that bit. <laughs> the idea of British people making clothes for Indians. Well, in a sense, that was true. <laughs> totally hilarious. <laughs> But, of course, what really motivated Gandhi was the struggle for independence from the British. Ah, yes. There's a bit here about him believing in civil disobedience. Oh, with all the knife crime around now, isn't that a little irresponsible? Not at all. Gandhi was completely non-violent. He did take on the entire British army single-handedly. Well, I'm not so sure about single-handedly, but he certainly took a stand, yes. An Indian Rambo, you might say. Don't push me, don't push me, or however a Muslim might say it. <laughs> Hindu. Yes, of course. I was also interested in your choice of name for the hero. Was there a hint of trying to, to play on the, on the success of Bambi? I'm sorry, I don't quite follow. Oh, you know, Gandhi, Bambi. <laughs> no. No, that's not something I considered. I think Clive would be a great name for the hero. He was real, you know. Gandhi was a real person. Yes, of course he was. Well, thank you for coming in, John, and good luck with the book. I think Gandhi's story would make a wonderful film. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome to the Caroline Hope Show. Cheryl, welcome. Thank you, Caroline. Now, you've just come back from three weeks in famine-stricken Niger, haven't you? Mm, for Amnesty International, that's right. How was it over there? Sunny? Uh, well, yes, it was unbearably hot. I mean, the conditions were appalling. I should perhaps point out to viewers that Cheryl's not being racist there. <laughs> Oh, good God, no. <laughs> Still looking good, I must say. <laughs> Lovely tan, mm -hmm. and you've lost quite a bit of weight. Was it important to fit in? It wasn't really about fitting in, Caroline. Yeah, of course not. I mean, these people are in desperate need of food and water. I mean, it's a terrible crisis. Absolutely. It's awful. <laughs> so, did you give them some of your food? You know pop out of the hotel with a doggy bag or two? Uh, giving them my food wasn't really what it was about, Caroline. No, it's about the people at home giving them their food. <laughs> yes, in a way. Um, my job is to let Britain know about the plight of these people as quickly as possible. Before you forget? Before it's too late. So, would you say it's your favourite famine? Favourite is probably not the word I'd use, um, but I see where you're coming from. <laughs> I would say they are all special in different ways. Like children with disabilities, which we'll be talking about with our next guest. But for now, Cheryl Wood, thank you for sharing your experiences of famine-stricken Niger. Good luck for the dieting video. Thank you, Caroline. 